right, well, good afternoon. Oh, I got a couple of you. I know you're falling asleep. You had a lot to eat, but let's try it again. Good afternoon. Hey, that sounded pretty good. All right, go ahead and take your song book with me. We're going to go ahead and get started this afternoon. Number 596. Let's go ahead and stand up together. This is a really easy, familiar one. Victory in Jesus. Let's start out the service nice and strong. Number 596. Stand up together. Here we go. I heard about a glory, how a Savior came from glory, how he gave his life on Calvary to save a wretch like me. I heard about his groaning, of his precious blood's atoning. There you go. Sing it out now. Good. Lift it up on that chorus. Here we go. Oh, victory. And heal my broken spirit. There you go, lift it up. To me, the victory. Here we go on that chorus. Oh, victory. God, he loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is to him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing blood. On that last verse, ready? I heard about a mansion he has built for me. Of course, oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and he by me with his redeeming blood. Praise God, he loved me and I knew him and all my love. Thank you so much. I'm going to ask a few guys to uh, help us out with the offering this afternoon. You can be seated, and uh, we're going to have our offering at this time. Mr. Brian, if you can help me out. Mr. Jimmy, thank you so much. Um, I don't think, did they take them out? Did they take them out? That's okay. They got them over there? Wonderful. Did you all enjoy this morning? Oh, my goodness. Praise the Lord. My dad and I were praying last night. Actually, as a family, we prayed last night. And we're really asking God to do a great work. I just talked to a lady during lunch. She said she prayed that prayer during that video. Amen. And uh, she's, Hallelujah. yes, praise the Lord for that. She, she prayed for her. She's struggling a little bit to understand some stuff. And so um, pray that God would open up his, her heart to his word. Uh, but it's worth it all if just one gets it, right? And it's worth it all just to share the gospel. So, Brother Jimmy, would you mind praying for the offering? I would be honored. Amen. Father God in heaven, Lord, how we praise and thank you 
for the gifts that you sent from heaven, Lord God. Yes. Thank you for this day and the precious souls that we know did get saved today. Yes. Lord, we pray there were many more. Mm. Father, as we go into this service, Lord, I pray as we take up this offering that, Father, we would show our praise through our giving. And Lord God, as uh, we give, we give with a cheerful heart, knowing that our uh, uh, giving will go toward the upbuilding of your kingdom. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. can sing when I pause to remember a heartache here is but a stepping stone along a trail that's winding always upward this troubled world is not my final home. The things of earth will dim and lose their value if we recall their borrowed for a while. The things of earth that cause the heart to tremble Remembered there will only bring a smile But until then my heart will go on singing until then, with joy I'll carry on Until the day my eyes behold the city Until the day God calls me its toll of misery and strife. The soul of man is like a waiting falcon, 
when it's released, it's destined for the sky. But until then, my heart will go on singing. Until then, with joy I'll carry on. Until the day my eyes behold the city. Is everybody ready to go to sleep? Come on now. Hang tight with me. Let's stay awake and we'll both suffer through. Amen? All right. Okay. Let me get that thing going. Romans chapter number 13 in the... Testing, one, two. All right, great. Super. I had it off a of mute and I had it on what I thought, but it just, I think it's a Baptist microphone. It works when it wants to. Okay. I'm glad you stuck around with me for this afternoon. I hope that what I'm going to share with you will be a great blessing to you. If I had preached this morning in the morning service, I don't know if I would have preached the message I'm about to bring to you. I'm going to try to do about 20 minutes and then we'll let you go. Um, but something the Lord dealt with my heart about in the relationship and what does the Bible have to say? Let me make sure. Is this, is this still on, Ray? I'm going to turn it off. What the Bible has to say, uh, the duties and responsibilities of those of us who are Christians as citizens here in the United States of America and in local government too. And then also what the Bible has to say in the responsibilities and the accountability of those who are placed in authority above us. Uh, God gave three institutions, right? Those of you in my Sunday school class, I went over some of this this morning in the class there, but God gave three institutions. One was, the first one was, of course, the home. Then it was uh, the institution of government and also the, the church in the New Testament age. So you have three institutions of authority or government that we are placed under. Um, preacher, why do we have this placed under? A lot of it is, of course, uh, in relationship to because we're sinners. And we need direction and guidance and, yes, sometimes correction in, in when we do wrong. And that, that's true. That authority is, is across the board in the home, in the church, in the government. God has lines of authority uh, for our good. Um, our police and our firemen and our sheriff's deputies, and um, I have great ad admiration for them because they are trying to do their part, and we're trying to do our part in respecting them, honor them, and so forth. Look at uh, verse number one. They're with me this, this afternoon. It's the issue of, of God ordained authority. God ordained, we're looking in particular to government and how God ordained uh, government and what it's about. Verse number one, the first statement, let every soul be subject unto the higher powers or ruling authorities is really what the word means. Uh, uh, subject just simply to submit to. Uh, those of you who are in the military, you know you have officers and so forth that are above you. You have to submit to their authority. Same meaning for this word. It is a submission to that authority that is above you. And so God has ordained authorities above us to help us and to protect us. Yes, even deliver us. Uh, many people have been delivered because of our, our law enforcement and also firemen and, and uh, of course, EMTs. A lot of lives have been delivered that way too. So he said, let the, every soul be subject unto the higher powers. Now, who is writing the letter? Now, we know under the inspiration of God's Holy Spirit, Paul is writing the letter, right? And who is he writing it to? The church believers at Rome. 
That's very important to remember because he was in prison under Nero. Nero, one of the most uh, worst of all the emperors. You heard the old saying about him fiddling while Rome burned? Well, that's Nero. Nero hated Christians. And Paul is writing this and saying, Church at Rome, you and I, we need to be submissive to the God-ordained authorities that he's placed in our lives. And that means even if it is Nero. Wow. Now, I'm going to go over some things that you and I have a responsibility to, yes, submit and obey. Then I'm going to go over some things that what those in authority have their responsibility before God because they are placed there by God. Did you know that a police officer, did you know that a sheriff's deputy, did you know those in local government, and so forth and so on? Do you know these folks are ministers of God? Wait a minute, preacher, you're the minister, you're the minister of the church, you're, you're the pastor. Wait a minute, let's see what God says in His Word. All right? Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, the ruling authorities, for there is no power but of God. The powers that be, now remember, Nero's in power. The powers that be are ordained or appointed by God. You, may not, you and I may not agree with certain leaders in certain offices across this land, but God has allowed them and, yea, put them in power for such a time as this. Come on now. Is that not what the book says? Am I preaching Bible or not? I may not agree with where they stand on their philosophies and all, and I will gladly say I don't agree. But I am going to say that they have the authority and we must submit to the authority. Now I know and I realize there's a time when God's people take a stand. Come on, you can say amen to that one too. Yes, we do. Uh, Peter and the apostles were put in prison. The Sanhedrin and their crowd pulled them out of prison and, and said, don't you go and don't you ever speak in this name of Jesus ever again. What did uh, Peter stand up and preach? He said, we ought to obey God rather than men. Amen. There is a time where you will stand for your faith in Jesus Christ and that is a biblical stance. That doesn't mean we do not submit to them maybe putting us in prison one day. That doesn't mean that we may not have some that will die at the hands of evil authorities. And I know there's a time to take a stand, but this is what the Word of God says, that we are to submit until we too have to take that stand for our faith, and then we may have to pay with it our own blood. See, preacher, that sounds kind of stern, isn't it? Yes, and for the last 2,000 years... Christians have paid by blood for the faith that you and I have today. Think about it. Many men and women were martyred at the stake for their faith in Jesus Christ. Read the Trail of Blood, little booklet. You ought to pick up on it. And those who were martyred for their faith, thousands upon thousands, the catacombs under Rome, thousands were murdered for their faith in Jesus Christ. Uh, read the book of Hebrews chapter 11. You'll see that they were sawn asunder. They were put in goat skins or some type of la uh, animal skins. You know they were put in la animal skins? Because those animal skins, once they fitted over the body, they'd put the, the person as a criminal out in the desert and then that goat skin, whatever that skin was, would dry up and squeeze the person to death. Your forefathers and, and mothers had a faith and they stood for it. And yes, sometimes we gave our lives for it. Do you know in this commonwealth of Virginia that Baptist people, Baptist preachers were the last of preachers that were persecuted in this commonwealth? That picture right on the back wall there, the one over here, shows a, a man with his arm outside a prison cell uh, window with a crowd around him. That's his congregation. The preacher's been thrown in jail because he would not take a license by the state of Virginia or the Commonwealth to preach under that license. which stood for liberty, and this guy over here, John Leland, talked James Madison into the First Amendment to the Bill of Rights in our Constitution that, 
that Congress will make no law regarding the establishment of religion or the free exercise thereby. So Christian people take, took their stand, but they were persecuted. Do you remember, uh, how many remember the old handkerchief in the old churches years ago? Some of those old grannies would get their old handkerchief out and the preacher would say something that they like. They'd do something like this. Amen, amen, amen. 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 And some of those guys would get excited. I, I, this won't too long ago, maybe 60, 70 years ago. And they'd wave their handkerchief back and forth. Hey, man, I preach on, preacher. Amen. Do you know that came from that picture, right, one of those pictures right there? The jailers said we had to keep their congregation from, being, from hearing the word of God. They built walls around the prison cells. The congregation, when they came, there was no way to let the preacher know they were there and ready to be preached to. They took a white hanky, stuck it on top of a pole, and waved it back and forth over the wall, saying, Preach, preacher, preach on! Amen. And that's where that came from. I know it's rather strange. But sometimes we do take a stand. But un until then, we do submit to the higher authorities that God has ordained in our life. Um, verse number uh, 1 again, For there is no power but of God. It is a God-ordained power. What does that mean? If I stand against the power and authority that God has ordained and set in motion over me, then what's taking place? I am standing against God. Whoa! Whoa! Did you hear that one? If they are put there by the hand of God, and ah, that little bubble comes on behind you, and pulls you off to the side of the road, and you start thinking, hmm, you know, not very kind thoughts about the police officer or sheriff's deputy. But they're doing what God ordained them to do. When I was down in Roanoke Island, I had an elderly couple. He was a deacon in the church, and we were invited to their home. We got on the subject about going five miles over the speed limit. And his wife spoke up, and she's like almost 70. She said, Harry, to her husband, uh, her name was Gladys, he said, Harry, well, isn't it so? Isn't it legal to go five miles over? <laughs> I started laughing, and he started laughing. No, honey, it's not legal to go five miles over. Now, I'm not going to ask for confession this afternoon, so don't worry. Some of you go more than five miles, too. But they stop us when we do wrong. Their job is to correct us because they're providing safety for others and for ourselves. Hmm. Okay, let's look a little further. What did God have to say about it? Verse 2, Whosoever therefore resisteth the power or the authority, resi resisteth the ordinance of God, you are literally resisting the Lord. God ordains authority. And they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. The word there literally means judgment. When you get that ticket and you have to go to court, and uh, they bring the hammer down and say, you've got to pay this fine or you stay in jail or whatever. That's the judgment. That's their job. That's to correct us. But I'm going to show you a secret. Some, uh, uh, Sheriff Diggs says he's going to watch this later. I'm going to show you a secret that is the job of every deputy, fireman, firewoman, EMT, to somehow do one other thing. Their job is not just to correct. Let's see what God has to say. Verse 3, for the rulers are not a terror to good works. I mean, if you do right, you're going under the speed limit. or what? That's just one example. If you're doing what's right, they're not a terror to you. But to the evil, when we do wrong, they are. Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Oh, yeah, let me tell you. When you, there, you know what I'm talking about. Just going down Hampton Highway, and if you see a police officer stop on the side of the road, immediately the foot goes, whoop, <laughs> off the gas pedal. We don't think they see that or notice that. They know. But sometimes that's good because they're there. And it's a, it's a deterrent to doing what is wrong. We understand that. He says there, uh, he is the minister. Did we get down to verse 3? Do that which is good, then thou shalt have praise of the same. Now that's the secret. What is the responsibility of those in authority? Think with me a little bit, okay? i got about five or so minutes left. What is the secret to authority 
working with those under the authority. Not only do they have the power to correct, but they have the responsibility, according to God, to also commend. When's the last time, I was talking about my Sunday school class this morning, uh, and I have heard of it, I have seen it done, where if someone was going the speed limit, maybe a police officer pulled them over and gave them a certificate of commendation, you did right, you were driving safely, da 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 da. That's, I know, very rare. Burns is a truck driver, he said, I've never had that happen. <laughs> Most of us never have. But what does God say about it? Now, wait a minute. Grab this principle because it's going to apply to the home, it's going to apply to the church, and it's going to apply to local government. What does it say? It says, for he is the minister, the word minister is the word we get deacon, diakonos in the Greek language, deacon, servant. This person who is placed in authority above us is a servant of the Lord and a servant to the Lord in how they administer their office. And goes on, he says, he is the minister of God to thee for good. What is the end part of verse 3? And thou shalt have praise of the same. Do that which is good, and you have praise of the same. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid, for he beareth not the sword in vain. Sometimes a, an officer, or, or maybe we have firemen. We've had an inspection here, I think a year or two ago, Daniel, wasn't it? They came through. They went through the entire building. This is right. This is wrong. This is right. This is wrong. Can you correct this? Please get this to do be up to code. Now, that was good because I have to say, and I shouldn't say it, Sheriff Diggs, don't, don't, don't hear this part. We had, we've been here 18 years. We haven't had an inspection in about 16 years. But we did well. I think we did pretty good, Daniel, with what they told us. Okay. And uh, what do you do? What do you do in a situation like that? He's the minister of God to good, but if they write a ticket to us, or if they write a citation, or something like that, maybe there's something wrong with the fire extinguishers, which we keep our fire extinguishers up to code. Maybe something wrong there, and they write something. Do they have the right to do that? Yes, they do. Are they also ordained of God to do that? That's what the Bible says. Are they a minister of God? Yes. Hmm. Okay, let's read a little further. For he is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. Now I mentioned that they are, their responsibility is not only to correct, but also to commend. Now granted, a person, if they're chasing, if a police officer or a sheriff's deputy is chasing down a criminal who just robbed something, uh, they're not going to stop the guy and say, to him, you're running pretty good, you know. <laughs> There's no commendation there. But... There's correction. But I want to say that, and I say this, folks, to your, our homes. Yes, even in the church house with the preacher, I'll put, point the finger at him. And the assistant pastor, Dan, you're going to share it with me. You know, we, we need to commend more. I genuinely appreciate what, all the work that went into what was done for this day today. And I've said that numbers of times when we've had special days and people work so hard. Ray, Ray has been working out on this yard for three weeks, folks. Three weeks. Yeah, thank you, Ray. Ladies have been working hard cleaning in the church and, and others outside. Yesterday we had a ton of folks come out who tried to help us clean up the place. It looks good. Still a few things we've got to get done. That's the correcting part of the preacher. Here's the com 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 commending part. You did a great job. You really did. All right, let's apply this to the home. Maybe Junior and Susie in the home are not as obedient as they could be or should be, though they have the responsibility to God for their part because mom and dad only correct them and never commend them. Learn a principle of leadership. It is not just a time for, time for the leader to correct. You must commend. I believe that that is a power, 
a secret power that is given in government but also can be applied to the home and even in the church house. If you correct, the Bible says this. Let's, let's deal with the, church, with the family. Daddies, here we go. Fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. The nurture is discipline. The admonition is, let me admonish you to do this, and, and you're doing well in what you're doing. There's a commendation, but there's also correction. If you correct and correct and correct and correct, then you will get people discouraged. Your, your children will become discouraged. Here's another verse, Colossians 3.21. Fathers, provoke not your children to, uh, to wrath, lest they be discouraged. No, to anger. Lest, provoke not your children to anger, lest they be discouraged. How can you provoke a child to anger? You correct and correct and correct and you get adamant with them. They start to rebel. You remember the old rule? Rules without a relationship lead to rebellion. If you don't have that relationship of commendation with them, don't expect them to listen to correction like they need to. Though they are responsible. All right, let's read a little bit and we're almost done. Verse 5, Wherefore, because of these things, um, wherefore ye must needs be subject or submit not only for wrath, not only because that guy's going to pull up behind you with that bubble, on and trying to stop you and give you a ticket, not only for wrath's sake that the judge may have to bring the hammer down, not only for wrath's sake, but look what the Christian is responsible for, a Christian citizen, but also for conscience sake. In other words, I'm going to submit myself because I'm going, I'm a, I see that they are ministers of the Lord, placed there by God-ordained authority, and I am to obey and if I've done wrong, then I am to pay. And in doing so, I'm going to do it not just because I don't want the ticket, uh, but I want to also have a conscience before God and before man that is clean. Amen. Your testimony, ladies and gentlemen, when you leave this earth, when you die and you leave this earth, the most valuable possession you're going to leave, not just about our children, but is your testimony. Think about it. For conscience sake. I'm going to obey, not just because of wrath, I might get punished, but because for conscience sake. Hey, young people, when mom and daddy ask you to do something, when grandma and grandpa ask you to do something, don't do it just because you don't want a spanking, but do it because for conscience sake, you want to do what is right by your mom and dad and your grandparents. You see how this all works together? It's not just them and us. It's not just us parents and our kids. This works together as a team. It's a beautiful thing God has ordained. And it can work if we do it God's way. And for, for this cause pay ye tribute. Oh, no. You know what tribute is, don't you? Taxes. There's only two things guaranteed in life. Death and taxes, right? The word here, tribute, was actually used when Jesus was here on this earth. And it was actually for countries that were taken over by Rome. In other words, Paul is saying to some of these folks at Rome, because um, he was one of them, he was a Jew, and the Roman Empire had taken over his, his, his people, right? The word tribute is used for taxes. Look at the next word. Okay, let's go a little further. For they are God's ministers. Do you know the tax people are God's ministers? Preacher, do you hear they're getting ready to hire 87,000 more IRS agents? No, yes, and I'm not thrilled about it. <laughs> Nobody is. Attending continually upon this very thing, render therefore to all their dues, tribute to whom tribute, ta or in other words, tax to whom tax, and look at the next phrase, custom to whom custom. And, and that is also really about, about the ones like us as we pay to our local local, uh, those in government, as we take care and pay for their, their salary. It's part of taxes. And, but what else are we supposed to do? We're to fear, to whom fear. In other words, we're to honor them, respect them. Honor to whom honor is due. Owe no man anything. It's talking about that 
respect, that honor, obedience to the laws that God has ordained above us. We may not totally agree with the laws, and when they are against God's word, which law will we follow? God's word. But we will take our stand, and then if we have to succumb to the persecution or succumb to the punishment, then we will stand with the Lord, because he will stand with us. Let's bow in prayer. I want to encourage you as a Christian, those of you who are saved, to vote when voting time comes up. It is important. It is a right and it is a duty to do so. I mentioned uh, this morning about how uh, we are to uh, vote for things that will honor God. You know, our, the, the ability to get the gospel out. Vote for the candidate that will help get the, the liberty and freedom that we can still give the gospel out. Vote for the candidate that will uh, allow prayer to be opened up more. We can see prayer as it was closed down in the schools back in the 60s. Then we see prayer opened up more freely in our country. Uh, to vote uh, for the person that will promote the foundation of the home, the biblical foundation of a home, and what is that about? Uh, and then to, to vote for, for the furtherance of what the kingdom of Christ is to be. And as we pray, and then vote, ladies and gentlemen, I'm very concerned. I, I, we had a voting registration day here last year, I think it was, or two years ago. I want to ask you, please, if you're not registered to vote, to go and do so and to vote. Brother Byron Fox was telling me that he and Brother Chad Connolly went to a very large church, about two or 3,000 people, and he said to the pastor, have, have you ever had a voting registration day? And he said, no, we never. I, I think all my people vote. Well, he said, I want to encourage you to do so. They had a voting registration day, and 400 people in that church were not registered to vote. Maybe if Christians did their account and were accountable and responsible and did their duty in voting, maybe we could see some changes towards righteousness. That was the last thing. Pray for a candidate that will honor God and do what is right. Righteousness exalteth a nation. But sin is a reproach to any people. Let's exalt righteousness and honor God. I know you will. Um, just in the quietness of the moment as Amy is playing with heads bowed and eyes closed, would you pray? Would you pray that God will give us the right kind of leaders? Maybe God would use you. I don't know. Brother Byron was talking about and how they're now seeing some folks in churches that are stepping up to the plate and saying, I will go, I will be in, in a civil government, I will do this. Pray for these folks, the first responders. They're, the song that the special music folks did this morning was Life on the Line. Their life is on the line every day. Would you pray for them? Would you, would you join me in trying to remember to pray for them? Hey, hey, it wouldn't hurt you to come up to the preacher and say, Preacher, we haven't prayed for first responders in a little while. Can we pray for them today? Pray for your military folks. Pray for those that, that work at the shipyard and, and help preparation for safety and, and liberty and freedom to preach the gospel. Do not take for granted the liberty that you have because it could be taken from you one day. Ask the infinite, powerful hand of God to intervene. You can look up this way. All right, I need to know, do we have any food left over? Just a little. A little bit left over? Okay, Ms. Isla, I got a piece of that carrot cake today. Amen. Whatever I ate today was really good. Did you enjoy that today? I, I, hope, I hope you did. Want to do it again, huh? All right. Okay, several things coming down the pike. Um, junior Harvest Rally, last Saturday this month. Daniel's taking a crew over. Uh, they had 100 juniors last year, shooting for 200 this year. Um, the week after that, first Saturday in October, Teen Harvest Rally. They had 350 teenagers in one spot. Boy, that's something in itself. I think they're doing the, Carrie, were they doing, they're doing the car this year again? 
where they have an old car they try to beat up with a sledgehammer? Yeah, let them take their frustrations out on that old car and not take it out on mom and dad at home, okay? And then in October, we have Dr. Danny Whetstone to be coming, preaching revival for us. We are going to do a Hallelujah Festival on Halloween night. We're going to, our answer against Halloween to have a Hallelujah Festival, so be thinking about that. We need folks to bring in candy. I was told the other day we need folks to bring in candy for that. Um, first Sunday in December, we have Brother Byron Fox will be with us all day. It should be a special day. We're doing a drama and a Christmas musical this year with the adults and the children. should be an exciting one for Christmas. Uh, a lot of stuff happening down the pike. Three missionaries going to come in. Brother Jim Taylor from Korea is going to be with us. One of the most exciting missionaries you'll ever meet. Uh, he's going to be with us. We have a missionary from Australia coming to be with us one of the Sunday nights in, I think it is, Wednesday or Sunday night in November. So, and, of course, we got Thanksgiving, and we got Christmas dinner, and we got eat, 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 eat. Yes, dear. Yes, I was supposed to announce. This Thursday, a group is going, and you're welcome to come and go. We can have eight people in a van or vehicle. For we pay only $50, and everybody gets in for the total of the 50 In other words, you can get in, ride all the rides you want, see all the things with the animals. You can watch whatever the things they have there for basically $6.25. Thursday nights when we're planning to go. We'll let you know more Wednesday, and Amy will put it out on an email blast. If you do not have your email uh, please, uh, to, on the email blast, please, please do that, because when weather starts changing on us, we try to let you know ahead. Sometimes we don't know until like the night before or the morning of if it's snowing or ice or whatever else like that too. And we'll try to let you know and put out a prayer chain when there are needs for prayer. Janice Spaulding is doing better, right, Robert? But she needs prayer and, and keep praying for her. Uh, Danny Hall, the funeral for Danny. I'll be getting with Tracy, his daughter, this week, and I'll let you know more on the particulars. He was cremated, and there will be a memorial service for Danny. Pray for... Tracy's mom, Tracy's an only child. Pray for Tracy's mom. Barbara has severe cancer in the stomach. She's not doing well, but we need to pray for her. Um, and I think that's about it. All right. Yes, Vern? Mm -hmm. um, when I get done uh, editing the, uh, the photos today, I'll be putting them up, up, up on my uh, Dropbox account, and uh, so I'll have a, uh, a folder that I'll be able to share. Good. With Oh, wonderful. That'd be great. And thank you. Thank you for doing that, Vern. Okay. You can eat a fellowship, go get more food, whatever you want to do. Thank you for being here today.